Okay, everybody, hopefully you can hear me. I cannot see you guys, so I can't verify what you're hearing or how things uh, sound. But I do have minimal feedback, so I'm going to roll with it. This broadcast is, I'm going to have to, uh, I have some adjustments, guys, I had to make today for the complete schedule of COT. It's a must. But uh, I'll inform you guys about that uh, this weekend. Hopefully, but tonight, I'm going to tell you guys about a couple of things. While everybody was watching the news yesterday or, you know, various things were happening, two major things took place. Two major things. Um, four policies passed. Six bills passed. Well, everybody was watching uh, television. I'm going to talk about one because it affects you guys, everybody, living in this time of the system of the beast. We're all Christians here. So we know that at some point, all financial centers, all regulated powers going to fall under one umbrella. You're actually in those days right now. And I want to tell you what that means because uh, as of yesterday, uh, just about every single major corporation that uh, deals with groceries and products for consumer consumption or use has now signed on to this uh, control center, so to speak. And what that means is cash registers are going to be taken out of all these stores. That transition began yesterday. Some stores, as a pilot program, have been running this for since the beginning of the year. And because it ran so well, uh, that makes your cell phone a must. It makes it absolutely imperative. In fact, you can't enter into a store unless you have your cell phone. So we all know what that eventually turns into. Uh, the cell phone or some similar device that will allow you to have a um, scannable code, that's how you're going to go into stores. Everything you pick up from the shelves, the shelves will have a band on every single shelf. It's almost like a flawless system. Nobody's going to be there to regulate what you get or don't get because they've also manufactured a few, uh, probably about uh, hundreds of millions of these small tabs that go into the manufacturing facilities, uh, which is why they were changing packaging, and it's already in the packaging. When you exit that store, the store is going to know what you have. So everything is being retrofitted. It is part of the 5G and 5G slash 6G slash, you know, up from there network. And so some of you should have noticed some higher towers. You know, these towers are higher than normal. 5G is relatively low as far as altitude. Uh, some are as low as, you know, uh, 10 feet. The other towers which are for machine-to-machine, -machine, Internet of Things communication, which they have perfected quite well. Those towers are about 50 feet. So imagine trees. A lot of these poles are camouflaged as trees. Um, but you can see the towers on top. So the communication basis between the networks, stores, uh, your, your code, your personal code, all that is functional right now. Stores are beginning to retrofit, which means that uh, people are going to have a different shopping experience. So we all know that's part of a system that's coming where everybody will have some sort of unique code to buy and sell, period, right? Um, it was also announced yesterday that it was confirmed rather that we do have a cashless society, that we do have digital currency. The U.S. dollar, by the way, 
is digital currency, just in case you did not know that. Uh, that's already digital currency. That came from all the major financial institutions. They have reordered uh, some things, rearranged uh, some things, new policies and paperwork. That's the first thing that happened, and all of this, again, is to get ready for this uh, unilateral system, this global system. But currency must flow through some sort of checkpoint, right? So the USA, NATO, uh, and, and certain Middle Eastern uh, countries, they're all switching to another system. That's us, too. So, in other words, before you purchase anything from any company, it will go through a government checkpoint first. Then it goes to your um, to the vendors or to whatever store you're buying from. So, that means when you buy something from Amazon, when you buy something from Target, one of these stores, it's not going directly to Target first. It's going to go to a central hub. Then it goes to one of those stores. So those are two big elements in place as of yesterday. All of this was pushed through yesterday. And that's something. So while the world's attention was on President Trump and, and this uh, fiasco, this thing that they have, and, you know, I try to tell people gently that uh, because it's so, it's sometimes the world is so real that you actually believe the circumstances. I'll tell you something. First of all, if somebody were in real trouble, uh, they're not going to, they're just certain things that don't take place. Second, you don't bend the law around people. You don't do that. In this case, that's precisely what you see. And for the most part, all it has done is consumed uh, the time of people watching it, right? Now, because everybody here is a believer, these days you have to be very careful. Because several things passed yesterday at the exact same time everybody was watching. Um, President Trump being indicted, right? And it really captured everybody's attention. Uh, so much so, they tracked who was watching what. Of course, you know they can do that. And it was so convenient how they had, uh, you know, four or five you know, different gatherings yesterday where these bills went through. It's very convenient, wouldn't you say? Uh, this entire situation with Ukraine is, is likewise a type of something to draw your attention away from something else. The fires in Canada, for example. And by the way, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. It's just very difficult to communicate certain things um, that come with consequences and that will have global consequences in a very short time. Better to be informed uh, than to be lost as far as what's going on and then you panic because you shouldn't panic. And uh, although the systems are being set up for the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is not here yet. In fact, the mark of the beast is you're going to have to become a citizen, and that will be in conjunction with something that's headed here that they're tracking right now. There is no real-time estimation on when that will be here, but I'll, I'll tell you something. You may not have known this, but uh, every single day they're leaking out information. Uh, they're trying to get people acquainted to the idea that extraordinary life forms are right here on this earth. They're trying to get everybody to take a second look because they need to shock and awe with people concerning uh, this UFO topic. And remember, I kept talking about June, and this is when they are releasing this information. Uh, captured vehicles, for example. There are, in truth, there are lots of captured vehicles or recovered vehicles. So I, I don't know how many they're going to disclose to everybody else. They also have specimens. They also have uh, a type of partnership, you could say. But the origins are a bit difficult to explain because they have taught people that the universe is one way that planets are not habitable, right? That nothing is inside the earth, so on and so forth, when in truth, 
you're going to find that all of this is going to change. And no one's going to care uh, that they were taught these weird things or people had these um, conspiracy theories or lies were told back in the past to suppress uh, what the Bible has always taught people. But now we live in a time where a reintroduction is coming. And a lot of truth is going to trickle out, come forward, and overwhelm just about everybody. Uh, which is why I emphasize having an anchor in prophecy, having an anchor in the Bible, right? So that nobody is surprised. It's going to be upsetting to a lot of people. And it's going to cause massive insecurities. And believe me, that's going to work to the advantage of what they're doing. Because right now you live in a time where transition is taking place. And this is going to be a forced system. Um, they're not going to ask you, do you want it or not? You're just going to happen to, you know, you're going to wake up one day, go through your routine, and find that everything has changed. Um, a brand new group of experts is coming forward. So you might want to get ready for that. They will have your attention. People will discard sound doctrine. And this is where many people are going to get lost in, in a uh, vortex of sorts. They never saw it coming. Never. Religion or Christianity, uh, they're going to throw that out of the window. I can tell you that now. They have artifacts and they have all sorts of things to cause a person who is not sure about their salvation to totally forget about Christ as being the son of the living God. And, and as a consequence of that, people will begin to redefine what and who they are. That's when people really turn on people uh, due to faith. It will absolutely isolate um, one group from another. And it's coming quickly. And if any of you are witnesses of how families are broken up because the children seem to be estranged from the parents, then you know that with the introduction of information that is quite logical and they have artifacts and findings and living representations of things, um, that's really going to convince people. For example, if you were to find out, and they told you themselves, and they told the whole world, that some of the leaders, right, they come forward, and they tell you straight to your face that they, they're they not really part of the human race. They're, they're part of it, but not part of it. And then they prove it to you. Uh, that's going to throw everything off. You're living in those type days, and before you say, well, that's crazy, just remember I said it. You'll be faced with some pretty heavy decisions. And if you're not locked in to the truth with Christ, if you're not familiar with the Holy Spirit, if you haven't been praying, if you can be tossed to and fro, it's going to be a bumpy ride for you. Right Now, Christ does not want to lose anybody, but that's up to the individual. For example, if a person says they don't want to follow Christ anymore, God will not stop them. That's our choice. There'll be no hostages in the kingdom of God in eternity. And that means on the earth it's going to turn into a type of utopia. A utopia, a place that's going to be unbelievably uh, refreshed. But you guys understand that, it's going to be is. Do you really think that Satan will allow anything to disrupt his plans of usurping? Everybody's uh, future in this beast kingdom. Do you really think that the beast kingdom is going to be this shabby place where people are barely surviving? That's not the way it's going to be. The Bible tells us Satan will often manifest himself as an angel of light. Oh, how do you think he gets people to do what they do? He lures them in like fish. That's what he does, just like fish. So he makes the situation. It's going to be a beautiful situation. Uh, very pristine, and people are going to buy it hook, line, and sinker. And those who are on the outskirts of this utopia, right, they're going to doubt their own faith. It's coming, and, and Lord knows I pray. Every day, it seems, I am introduced to new things that are happening, forming. Things are going at high speed uh, towards this beast kingdom. And one event, one major event, will kick off the whole thing. 
But no one here can say I didn't say a word about it. I tried to stay away from some of the uh, subjects that had nothing to do with that. And now what do you hear? Well, yesterday again, uh, there are a group of people, I believe, they're clear to talk uh, Saturday. I believe it is going to be the first day they're able to talk about some uh, recent activities. Better guarantee to blow your mind. It really is it's going to cause you a moment to pause. Because, again, they're going to prove, they're going to continue to hammer the fact in that um, you've not been by yourself. That you've had helpers. They're going to make evil look very uh, appetizing. It's not going to be seen as darkness. It's going to be seen as a solution. Iniquity is not going to be seen as iniquity. It'll be seen as freedom. And people are going to fall for it. The greatest part of a believer, have your heart crushed because those people you trusted in and loved fell away from their faith. you got to remember that each person must choose for themselves. You don't know who has actually chosen Christ of the heart. You've got to be prepared for people you that may be close to you. You've got to know that anybody, anybody, has a right to say no, right? And that out of desperation or any other reason, people do some pretty uh, drastic things. But for the most part, if you're truly called of the Lord, many are called, few are chosen. Being called does not guarantee you're going to enter into the kingdom of God saying yes to Christ, right? That's the way. When you choose light over darkness, that's the way. When you choose his truth, even in the face of humiliation, when everything is failing, when everything is tough and hard, when you continue to say, yes, Lord, even if you sound like an idiot, continue to say, yes, Lord, those are the individuals that will be kept. They're going to be kept. Those fires in Canada came at the exact same time. It also came at the exact same time when in New York, uh, something was, they had a one of those declarative ceremonies dealing with Baphomet. And many products and items were posted on big screens the same day that smoke came into New York City. And these guys, they know exactly what they're doing. They do. They most certainly do. Even like today, if that's any indication, uh that have to be made, but evil is at work, and it's working over time. You are the target to get you not to believe. So be careful of the information coming forward, and make sure you're not consumed with these uh, too many extraordinary stories that you're about to hear. And no matter how much proof comes your way, operate by faith. Remember, it's impossible to please God without faith. Your faith is tied to your initial belief. The belief you had before anybody taught you anything. Who knows how long they're going to be here or what they have to endure. But the Lord is not cruel. Not the way he works. And he's not going to have some unsuspecting person suffer the worst. That's not the way he works. He's a good father. But Satan is very sneaky. And all too often, you've been abandoned. Like things have really fallen apart in your life. But in truth, they have not. They haven't. That's your father asking you a question, right? Desiring to know that is there anything in existence that can cause you to turn against the Lord? That's what your circumstances are for. And if you look carefully, you're going to find that's precisely what they've been doing. Now, for all those who continue to choose the Lord, for all those who were born of him, and they just continue to choose him, it adds strength by way of wisdom, by way of knowledge, right? It adds that to your walk, that you will have wisdom from above, that pure, peaceful, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy wisdom, right? That you'll have the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, that all these qualities will be a part of you. Right? And you end up doing nothing 
nothing by way of complaints, but you do all things without murmurings and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the true sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Hmm? That's the key, that's what the Lord is doing. Impossible odds you face, but the Lord is quite serious about you being raised. Thus far, it's been a challenge, yes, but we know we've had help, right? But prepare yourselves for many to turn reprobate. And that's why you see these certain qualities in the world that people now adopt as a normal portion, portion of life, like fornication, right? People are constantly plotting. That's wickedness, correct? Covetousness is all over the place. That's the greed of people, maliciousness. That's people who are constantly involved in troublesome things. You have a conversation with them, and then trouble pops up in the conversation. Jealousy is all over the place. That's a person who's full of envy, right? We all know that murder is in the land. Debate, you seem to have more quarreling. That's what debate is, quarreling, right? You seem to have more of that these days than at any other time. This world is full of deceits. That, that means decoys and uh, baits, right? Malignity, that's another form of being mischievous, right? Whispers, backbiters. Right? Haters of God, the spiteful, proud. Appearing above others is one of the natures. To be proud in this context is appearing above others. That's why you want to put yourself above the next person. Or you see the next person being elevated and jealousy steps into you. Telling you, well, why should they be elevated above you when you're more qualified? All that is part of iniquity that gets inside of a person, right? You have boasters. Those are the ones who brag or trust in their own successes and confidences. Inventors of evil things. It seems like governments are really, uh, really doing this right in front of people's faces. Um, you have a lot of children. And all these are part of a reprobate mind. And these are characteristics of society as it is today. You have children who are disobedient to parents. They seem to command parents. More than anything else, you have covenant breakers. The divorce rate in the land is so incredibly high, right? And people, they don't like commitment anymore. They don't. If they're not prompted, they can't do it. If, if there's no proof, they never knew it, right? Things of that nature. Without natural affection, implacable. And that means you can't make peace with certain peace people. And they're quite unmerciful. Um, so they're not going to be merciful to your situation. And if you're not careful, that same spirit will jump into you, making you unmerciful to somebody else. When you're unmerciful, something will speak to your mind, giving you an excuse to never contribute to a person, right? To never lend a hand to a person, to not forgive a person. If a spirit speaks to you and you make up in your mind you can't forgive that person because of what came into your mind, that is not from the living God. That is not from your Father in heaven. That's from an earthly entity who's been kicked out of heaven, and his name is Lucifer. That's who that's from. Because the Lord and his gospel is all about forgiveness. That's what that's all about. It's all about the opposite of having a reprobate mind, as you can find that in Romans 1, 28-32, right? And the Lord didn't give us a reprobate mind. But when people continue to operate within iniquity, he gives them over to a reprobate mind. Any elements of a reprobate mind, you find that in the world every single day. So the world's in a rapid state of decay as far as morals are concerned. Yet, this new system they're thrusting in, it's all-consuming. Everywhere you turn, there's going to be a representation of this new kingdom coming into play. Kingdom comes with occupants. Some of the people who are on crash for tribal teams, they're going to be speaking to the public, by the way, of what's going on on the back end. They're going to make these events friendly. Friendly. In fact, they're going to tell you about a few things about them. Um, what's been happening behind the scenes. The one thing they won't tell you is that one entity that's behind it all. They're going to hide the populace into believing that somehow this is the way things work. 
they're going to introduce something called, well, it's actually a, a Congress and something like the Bill of Rights. But it's for the entire globe. And most people don't even know this exists. There are certain people in the know. They know it exists. And it covers the entire globe. And it's just like the Bill of Rights. That'll be introduced too. It's already been written up. It's in book format. It's in digital format. PDF format. It has a symbol on it. That symbol is going to be seen everywhere. All these things. They're putting into motion, and nothing is halting it. It's almost like people have lost the ability to resist it's for you. Have you guys ever bought a car before, a specific type car, and after you buy the car for somebody or somebody buys a car that you know about, all of a sudden you start seeing that car everywhere, right? Like they just now manufactured that car that you bought. Um, you may buy a pair of shoes, and then all of a sudden you see those shoes everywhere. Right? That's a phenomenon. That's quite normal. And here's what it means. When you're living life, unless it has meaning to it, you cannot see it. Things exist all around you that you have no power to see because it's meaningless to you. Once something gains meaning to you, whatever it is, everywhere, and it's not like everybody just now, you know, they just started driving the car that you have. It's that that car has become meaningful to you. And so you begin to see what's always been there. But it's always a shock to people to find them. Wow, I see. I saw that car there. I saw it there. I saw it there. You know, like it, like they just now started to exist or somebody copied off you, right? But that's not the case. So we suffer from a blindness because things are meaningless to us. So I give you a key. In order not to be blind, remember God's creation. Be thankful for God's creation, right? And have God's creation be meaningful to you, not some tool that you use and discard. But be thankful for God's creation. And your eyes will begin to open. And just like you notice these other cars or other shoes or other colors that once had no meaning to you, so you didn't really see them, and then one day they had meaning to you because you, you obtained it, and all of a sudden you see it everywhere. When you're thankful for God's creation, and I mean thankful, like wake up and say, thank you, Lord, I can breathe. You know, thank you for the air. You're going to begin to notice things you never thought you would notice. You're going to see everything your world is going to expand. Until that time, though, you're going to have tunnel vision. You won't be able to see what you need to see. Your eyes are going to be shut. And part of that, right, part of that being appreciative for things, assigning meaning to God's creation, is having scales pulled off of your eyes. You're able to see through things. You can hear through things. And it's not some weird phenomena. It's going to be natural to you. You'll even say yourselves, well, I couldn't see that before, but I can now. And that's amazing. It will be amazing at first. But most people aren't aware that they're blind in the first place, which is why they do not see what's actually happening in the earth right now. They can't put it together. It's almost like you learn something one week and it's robbed from you, you know, two or three days after. And then something else happens. And you have long forgotten about the first thing that took place, right? Until you're reminded of it through a similar action or a similar circumstances or a similar event. And then you begin to recall that thing that took place. But if you're appreciative of God's creation, of all of what he's doing for you, and you remember this on a daily basis, you're not going to forget. You'll see things every single day. You'll become much more aware Right? That's called seeing truth. That's simply seeing what's around you. You won't have tunnel vision. Your hearing, it'll change. You'll become much more astute about everything you're involved with. But most importantly, seeing cannot uh, trick you, deceive you. He won't be able to deceive you. The Lord will do that for me. When a child learns to walk, they have to learn to walk, don't they? It's a process. 
It's a process. Who enables them to learn to walk? The father does. But they didn't in learning to walk because if they don't, they will not learn to walk. Many of you had to learn to drive, right? You just didn't automatically have the skill set to drive. Well, normally you don't. It's a process. You have to learn it. Right? Everybody drives, but that's something you have to learn, correct? To actually having to choose, actually going through a process. A lot of people have this statement. They say, well, God will do that for me. No, he's made the way so that you can achieve it. But if you're persistent, right, and you're pursuant of what you're attempting to do, you will eventually do it. He's empowered you to do a lot. But you have to choose to do it. You have to focus on doing it. Be responsible in doing it. And it will be done. For the most part, it'll be done. Remember those things. Because everything is about to get so much more confusing. There's a big scare that comes before the utopia, though. In about two weeks, there's a formation of one of those uh, brand new systems, I guess people are going to call it something different, but it's quite powerful, quite destructive. I don't know if you'll remember this conversation in two weeks, but we have something coming in two weeks. That's not going to compare to anything else. It's going to be quite destructive and quite different. For example, there may there could actually be a foot of hail. Can you imagine that? A foot of hail. That's 12 inches of hail. That's a pretty powerful storm. And just before you say that's impossible, you do recall the water potential or the flooding that took place out of nowhere. Several inches of rain in less than an hour and a half. A lot of places. If that translates into ice, because the wind will be much more than it was then. Updrafts will be much more powerful. And the high-pressure and low-pressure systems, they're going to be driven by a heat and cold differential we've not seen before. We'll start striking in many different places. Why? Many of the uh, governments of the world right now are trying to stake their claim on Greenland because of its position. The ice is melting all over that area. And it is a strategic place, uh, a good positioning place to run operations all over the world, but being protected by some of this weather uh, phenomena. They've tried hard. Uh, they only succeeded in, in a temporary evaporation point with HARP. They already tried that two or three times this year, and it didn't work. The forces that we're facing are tremendous, tremendous. And they're going to continue to build. And build and build. Be ready for those things, everybody. Be ready. I'm going to do my best to cover everything as best as I as best I can. Sometimes I do stall. I get into stall modes just to see if things are going to pass or you guys can be informed about relevant things. But I'll do my best to keep you guys informed. And your families matter. There are some preparedness issues and advisements, the old things, and I know about some of the new information that people will present to the public. But they're going to set up a trap. They're going to set a trap so that people can't really make it themselves, but will feel comforted by governmental entities. I'm going to say entities because it won't necessarily mean the federal government, but these different factions and groups were sponsored uh, let's go ahead and say by the kingdom of the beast, they're going to help people out, which will gain the confidence of people. You know exactly what they're going to do. To the best of my ability. And so far, uh, because I still have insight and contacts, that should be fairly easy. I'm still useful sometimes. Who knew? Still useful. But, uh, what is coming is it's very different. It's nothing anybody imagined. It will line up exactly like scripture, but it will not be like anybody imagined. We can guess all day. We can go through scenarios all day. It won't be like anything anybody imagined. 
going to be very different. The first, you know, step in preparation is making sure that your relationship with Christ is real, is solid, unshakable. Is to have that daily relationship with Christ. That takes encouragement and community in a lot of cases. Those two items about your the stores and everything, don't let that shock or shake you. Don't let that do that. Because going into the stores, right, a lot of people are going to think that, you know, that's the mark of the beast. No, that is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, I, I cannot definitively say what I'm about to tell you is the mark of the beast. I can't, but I can tell you that it's going to be a method. Uh, it's going to be something that everybody's going to have to do established governmental entity is going to take place and that means you're going to have to swear an oath you're going to have to renounce all sovereignties you cannot be a Christian in this coming society Christianity is forbidden do you guys know that but there's no other religion that's going to be forbidden Christianity will be Specifically, when I say Christianity, I mean Jesus. That means their definition, but you cannot, you cannot, you cannot utilize the name of Christ. You cannot. And all those, Jesus, never, never to operate by any of those little things they outline concerning Christ. People are going to mention the name God, but it's going to be a largely scientific community. All mythos is going to be, that's going to be done away with. And no wonder, you know, after reading certain things and after seeing certain things that are absolutely real, no wonder the people worship the beast, saying unto the beast who was like unto the beast who was able to make war with him. No wonder they didn't like religious figures during that time. No wonder, because they had everything they wanted. Everything they wanted. That's also when they release most of what they've been holding back concerning power, concerning uh, purification of water and everything else. My goodness. In one of the midnight hours, for example, I was going to talk to you guys about some of the older buildings that they have to get rid of and that they have gotten rid of. They're shaped in a very specific way for a specific reason. All of them had these uh, bulbs on top. Did you notice? All of these older, older buildings, and there's a reason for that. They've done away with that. They have just uprooted just about everything. And some of these buildings went down hundreds of feet into the ground, which is strange. And that is because of how they did things. Because they did not, you know, in this day and age, they want everything funneled through government. They want everybody to pay for everything, right? There has to be a controlling faction to control the people. That's what government's for. Everything goes through them. They charge for everything. But in those societies back then, they did not. They, they, back in the 1800s, some of the architecture back in the 1800s will blow your mind. But they have almost erased all of that from history. They show you people, the cowboys and the crazy stuff. They will not show individuals what, what route the USA was actually taking. They wiped a big portion of that out. It's archived, of course, but it's not public. It's not public because you had one individual, possibly 37 may know who that individual is, one individual who was a heavyset guy who wrote all the curriculum for all the USA for many years, I think for, what, 35, 40 years. It all went through him for all the universities here in America, also in Italy, also in Europe, also in the U.K., one guy did this, and this guy was not a Christian. He was in charge of all the textbooks, of, of whatever textbooks a student would have. He was in charge of that, this one guy. This one guy knew every leader in the world, and when this one guy died, all leaders, every single last one of them, came to his funeral. Enemy countries, they all came together for his funeral. Isn't that something? That is something. And, and that's public knowledge. 
right? But people never put things like that together. They never look into things like that because it never comes up on somebody's radar because education is supposed to be this automatic system that nobody ever questions, unfortunately. That's what that is. But that's what happened. As a consequence, he, th this guy, determined what went in the textbooks and what did not how he formulated education, uh, then you would begin to see why they teach the way they teach. They have methodically and scientifically gone through a process to make sure that every citizen of any country is going to be a working uh, element to support what they're actually doing. Because what they've actually been doing, they've been doing consistently for hundreds of years. And it's actually coming to fruition. It's here now. Folks, I wanted to tell you about that. That's quite serious. You're not shaking to pieces when this time comes. Keep Christ first. You have an actual shield. You have absolute protection from everything that will come. But you have to choose. And your choice must be real. Right? Your choice must be real. In Christ, his gospel, his ways. And if you don't know the gospel or his ways, right, because to know Christ is to know his gospel. If you don't know the gospel, it's impossible to know Christ. You have to know his gospel. You have to know what he stood for. You really do. You have to know what he stood for. I'm going to do my best to help anybody who would like to know anything about that by going through this study. In John, I want to get sent back from time to time because I've explained to you guys, you know, there are certain things I have to support with COT, right? And I know we're not there. We're not some big place yet. We're not, we're not some big place. We don't go that route. But sometimes I get, I have to do things on the opposite side of that to make sure that we continue to operate. And I do appreciate anything anybody ever does. Sometimes, you know, it's at this stage, Sometimes time, my time is going to be limited. We'll go as far as the Lord will allow us to go to accomplish what we need to accomplish, certainly in these days. That's a fact. But folks, you are now duly updated. Are some war things happening? And there is another side to what you've been seeing in the news, but we'll cover that a different time. A different time. Right now, right now. Their principles that these folks through society have begun to fight and it's reflecting in the activities of most folks is quite astounding, but I'll talk about that next time when I come on air. Because you may not know that how you respond to things in general is a consequence of what's been against you. And you may be falling for something and it could be spoiling your mindset right it could be spoiling that because somehow some way something out there has been teaching people well you just gotta you know you just sit and you grunt everything that comes your way that's not the way to live life that's not what the lord has for us that is not what he has for us in fact a lot of people are sitting down when they should be standing up a lot of people are frightened when they should be walking forward that's possible by way of the spirit and if you believe in Christ, nothing can stop you from receiving the Holy Spirit. Nothing. The Holy Spirit is with you. But I'm talking about walking with the power of the Holy Spirit. To complete the process. Accepting Christ is one step. Just like the disciples. They believed in Christ, didn't they? But there was another step. And that other step was their compliance and obedience. Then the Lord. Then the Lord. He showered them with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what he did, right? Remember, he told them in Acts chapter 1, do not depart out of Jerusalem until that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you'll receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. See, a lot of people are missing the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit because that's how Christ is with us, as he already wrote. But the power of the Holy Spirit enables you to be functional with the gospel. So you just don't have to be a, a spokesman for it. 
but an active element for the gospel, making that physical difference in people's lives, beginning with you. That begins with you. That's a step that's, that's seldom discussed. And for the most part, it almost makes things seem so mythical, untouchable. There's a disconnect there. With the power of the Holy Spirit, Satan has absolutely lost in your life. He can't touch you anymore. And your household is going to change. But there's some things that are written in the Bible you have to be prepared for. There's some choices you have to make. And once those choices are known in truth, it's not a choice. Even the Lord said it's not a choice. You just, you know, make it just like that. Nope. Nope. You have to consider everything before making this choice. If you want to take that path, that needs to be discussed too. Because right now in the world, Satan is exercising his power all over the place, corrupting so many things. And if he could, he would corrupt and deceive you too. You are the balance, the light in this earth, the defeated foe. Remember that. Escaping. Escape what? You're the children of the Most High. You don't have to escape your father's earth. This is not Satan's earth. This is your father's earth to hold you up in all of his ways over the devil. He's giving you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. You have nothing to fear in this earth. The problem is there's a disconnect. There's some questions people have not answered because it's not popular. What's been popular has been, you know, celebrating on Sunday. That's what people do. Celebrate. But the instruction has been taken away for some reason. Just for time, for time. But it's all coming back. The Lord said it would, especially in these end days. It's all coming back. There is one good thing to what these people are about to disclose to you in the world, there's one good side of this, is that you will know you're living in the last days. Things you never thought you would see. Your children are prepared for it, but you may not be. And that quite a few people have been working in certain fields, face-to-face with things that no one would believe, but we just it just so happens we live in a time where there's an agreement. There's an agreement that everything must go forward. As a consequence of things going forward, everything is coming out. Shut uh, down for a little bit. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you guys next time right here on COT. I'll update you guys via the website on things, okay? God bless.